And that was it, my friends. I found out that I have no choice and I need help. We started praying, we started publicizing, we started doing everything we possibly can to make sure that the world at large, at the very least, if we could stop one person from attending this lecture, we will. But many people took this to heart and are helping in every way they can. I even had one guy, Rob Zitron, Sadiq from New York, went to Israel and he went to Rav Kanievsky's. Rav Kanievsky, Gdola Do. Okay, he doesn't get bigger. Rav Kanievsky right now, number one. He asked this question. Same type of response I got from the Rishon Lezion. Obviously they didn't write letters yet, which we're working on, because no one wants to take the word. The Rav Kanievsky is against Abu Dazara. You know, Chas Shalom, you know. Or Rishon Lezion. <laughs> no one wants to take our word. Everyone thinks that we made this up. Like everything I just said for the last two and a half hours, I made it up. It's my own halachot. I became Moses. He asked the office in, of Rav Kanievsky, he said, what kind of joke is this? Of course it's not allowed. You're not allowed to even have him in the synagogue, they said. Inside the synagogue. As a guest, as, a, as anything. Not allowed. It's considered a mean. Now, if I told the Kayla everything I just said, many of them are going to bash me as much as possible. You are this and you are that and you are this and you are that. But one thing I do know about this Kayla, some of them are very nice people. And some of them suffer still to this day because of the Holocaust. Family that died. Even themselves sometimes suffer. There's still some Holocaust survivors in there. So if I told them, that there was a certain speaker that's pro-Hitler. Pro-Hitler. They'd cancel the event immediately, right? Logically, I mean, you're a Jew, even if you're not religious. Somebody says, listen, Hitler, decent guy. Anything positive about Hitler and Machimo, it's not a good thing. Not for a Jew, at least. Kvod Hashem, not so much. Hitler, okay, so let's just see. Let's just see some information from Matthew Kelly's work. Matthew Kelly. In his book, he writes this, in preparing to write this book, I tried to take a fresh look at the Gospels and all the people in them. Excuse me for reading all of this garbage. I have to for the purpose of proving my point. I was hoping to rediscover Jesus by rediscovering the people he interacted with. The thing that fascinated me f about the Pharisees, as I, discovered, as I rediscovered them, was that they always accused Jesus of blasphemy. By the way, Pharisees, for anyone who doesn't know, is a derogatory, a derogatory term for Jews. This was their big hang-up when it came to Jesus. To blaspheme is to speak of, to blaspheme is to speak of God in an irreverent, impious manner. In essence, he's calling Jesus God. The paradox is that the Pharisees were in fact the ones blaspheming in the way they spoke to Jesus and about him. Now in case you don't believe me that Pharisees means Jews, let's continue reading. There were others who even mocked Jesus. The soldiers mocked him, hailed King of the Jews and spat at him. Quotes Matthew 27, 29. Can you imagine mocking God? Again, calling Jesus God. Okay, let's continue somewhere else. In case we didn't create enough anti-Semitism, by the first part, let's create more anti-Semitism in part two. In his other book, he talks about, it must have been an incredible experience because Paul would suffer tremendously for the rest of his life as a result of his belief in Jesus. The Jews tried to kill him because he publicly taught that Jesus was the Son of God. Great, tell people about Jews doing bad things and come to our synagogue. Great job, buddy.
tell tell us tell tell us some more things that we did. This is again in another one of his book called Rediscover Jesus: An Invitation by Matthew Kelly, page eighty six. As a matter of fact, anyone who doesn't know, Paul was actually the one who caused the rise of Christian anti-Semitism. Next. In Rediscover Jesus, page 38, Matthew Kelly says this, God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. By the time Jesus, by the time of Jesus, these had evolved to 613 laws. In essence, he's saying we changed the Torah. The simplicity of Jesus' teaching was radical, in contrast to the stifling effect of these 613 laws have on our daily life. Oh yeah, I want this guy talking to my teenager and telling him the 613 commandments are stifling. Yes, great motivation. We're going to bring us back to the derech quickly this way. Okay, let's continue. Rediscover Jesus, page 47. What is he saying? Meaning, he's talking about Jesus. What is Jesus saying? He's saying to love Emperor Nero, Adolf Hitler, Osama bin Laden, and child molesters, and pray for them. I'm reading verse for verse, as I didn't make this up. I, even if I was crazy, I wouldn't make something like this up. This teaching is so radical that when we really stop to think about it, our chest gets tight, the airways to our lungs become con constricted, and we find it hard to breathe. Oh yeah, Jews at Boca Raton Synagogue and everywhere else that want to accept Matthew Kelly, you need to love Adolf Hitler. Good job. You are a righteous Jew that way. Your grandparents will be so proud of you. Okay, next. Page 188 and Rediscover Catholicism. We move on to another book. Jesus Christ, born 2,000 years ago, Jesus of Nazareth, is not a myth or a legend, but a well-documented figure in history. But more than that, he is the Messiah. So now he's changed it. He was God before, now he's back to being the Messiah. He like switches. Switch, like you switch pants, he switch roles. He is the Messiah who has been prophesied in the Jewish scripture, our Old Testament. Their Old Testament is not ours. Our Old Testament and long awaited by the Jewish people. Thank you for the insight. Originally, the event at BRS was called Passion and Purpose, led by Matthew Kelly. Matthew Kelly invites us all to identify God's voice in our lives and the specific purpose for which we've been created. This was on the flyer of Boca Raton Synagogue. No one found anything wrong with it, apparently. We're going to learn God's voice in our lives and the specific purpose. Why? Because it was pitched as if this guy is like uh, some motivational speaker. I can't really say Tony Robbins because he's also an idol worshiper and he also mentions Jesus in his lectures. Just lay into them. If you go to like the seminars and you go deep into it, it starts talking about J.C. Penney. So, whatever, this guy was pitched as like, you know, motivational. This guy is going to be, I don't know, teach you how to sell, teach you how to live, teach you how to be happy. I don't know what he's going to do. He's going to do something like this, but he's going to teach us about God too. Okay, so everyone... Got fooled into this. But interestingly enough, his phrase, become the best version of yourself, wasn't originally that. Matthew explains the history of the phrase in his book, Four Signs of a Dynamic Catholic. In his earlier talks, he noticed that when he spoke about the Second Vatican Council, Universal Call to, call to Holiness, the eyes of his audience would glaze over. People weren't really that interesting in that term. It wasn't marketable. Then one day, purely by accident, he instead used the phrase, become the best version of yourself, and found that people started to become animated and engaged. So he continued to use the expression in his talks and books. To become holy, to become a saint, is the same thing as to become the best version of yourself. To become all that God calls you to be. It's not pop psychology. 
It's just plain old Catholic teaching with a shift in language. As a matter of fact, he likes this best version of yourself so much that he trademarked it. And he also trademarked universal call to holiness. And by the way, universal call to holiness means to him, Christ is the light of the nations. Hashem Menachem. And as I told you before, he went to a campus to promote being a better you. And this is what they wrote briefly. According to Kelly, everyone, regardless of religion, must answer the question, who was Jesus? Mr. Kelly was asked what he thought about the problem of evil. He responded by saying, suffering is part of the human experience. Christianity is the only religion that explains suffering. This is what he says, this idiot. Catholicism is your path to become the best version of yourself. This is again, quoting people, not me. And in case anyone thinks I'm exaggerating about his fees, you could just go to keynotespeakers.com, put his uh, information. He used to charge $40,000 per lecture plus demand a, um, a uh, first class ticket and, you know, and, and so on. Now I think it's thirty thousand dollars. He got a little cheaper because he sells a lot of books, so he sells enough books to make up the other ten thousand. Or for whatever reason, it's thirty thousand. So apparently, someone, whether it's BRS or the Jewish Federation that's co-sponsoring this horrific Hilul Hashem, uh, someone is paying a ton of money for us to be fooled by idol worshiping. Great. Now, it's convincing enough. Now, in case anyone says, okay, fine, this is a one-time error. Apparently, I myself was asleep at the wheel a few months ago. Because, again, I generally, I'm very busy, I travel a lot, and I'm just not involved. If I, any synagogue that I go to, I go, I pray, I leave. I'm not involved. I'm not an involved person. I have my own thing that I do. So, apparently, I missed this thing where on November, the weekly of November 15th and November 25th, we had another APAC event. APAC is a big supporter of Israel, apparently, and uh, many of the people in the congregation are members of it and so on. Okay, great. Congratulations. Israel needs as much support as possible, as long as it doesn't go against God. Unfortunately, it is funded by many Christians and idol worshippers, and uh, what ended up happening is that we invited some of them to the shul. So, on the weekly of Parashat Vayera, if you look at the weekly, which you can go on the brsonline.org website, and you can find the archives of the weeklies, um, and you can see, actually, this was not the first time. As a matter of fact, in this weekend, we had a panel. A panel of Israel supporters that just happened to be evangelical Christians, the number one missionaries on the planet. By the name of a, uh, let's see, Oscar Bryan II, Stephen Marin, calls himself a Christian Zionist activist and advocate for Israel, William F. Callahan, and it's moderated by Ed Miller. <coughs> One of them is actually local financial advisor in Boca Raton, a very, very passionate Christian missionary. And they had a whole panel on Shabbat. On Shabbat. Kila. Thousand people show up. I obviously didn't go, but I'm assuming at the very least 300 to 600 showed up, maybe more. Panel, they had the floor to talk about how much they support Israel. The problem is no one sees through the lies, and excuse my language, the BS, to see that, yes, of course they're supporting Israel. They're trying to convert all of you, you idiots. But all of us are comfortably numb, supporting this Chilul Hashem. And then we ask, Hashem, why don't you give me Parnasa? Hashem, why don't you give me a Zivug? Hashem, why am I sick? 
Hashem, why does my wife not have any patience for me? Hashem, why does my husband so cheap? Hashem this, Hashem that, Hashem this and Hashem that, and we constantly ask Hashem why he does this and why he does that, and where was he during the Holocaust, and where was he during the pogroms, and where were you when Chilul Hashem was about to happen? What did you do? You, sitting, watching, attending. What did you do when Chilul Hashem was happening? Now I have a lot more material to make five other lectures. About personal people, about all types of other things that no one else knows. But we're going to leave it at this. Because again, this is not personal. This is about Kvod Hashem. Where is your Kvod Hashem? That you're inviting idol worshippers and violating and desecrating the Torah. Where is it? How can you look in the mirror and say it's okay? Are you more confident than Chazal? You're better than them? You could do better than them? You're more righteous than them? Or are you just comfortably numb? Where you're enjoying this world so much and instead of thinking about the Mashiach being around the corner and the world, world at large is a disaster, you don't really want the Mashiach to come. You just want to continue extending your kitchen. Continue remodeling your house. Continue raising money for some other saved the cat foundation. Where is your Kvod Hashem? I don't care if you're a rabbi, you're a dayan, you're a uh, small rabbi, big rabbi. None of that stuff matters to me. Only thing that should matter to any of you is Kvod Hashem. Now this is part one of the lecture. If it has to, it'll get worse. If it has to, it will get worse. Because in a place that there's Chilul Hashem, there's no consideration for Kvod Arav. Yes. Let's keep it. I told you before. Let's keep it off of. He did bad things in the previous. It's not his first time. I understand. Let's keep it. Anyone that wants to find out more information can find that on their own. This is purely Allah. This is purely Torah. So that way they can't say, oh no, it's a personal battle between Rabbi Mizrahi and Ephraim Goldberg. Or your own Ruven and Ephraim Goldberg. It has nothing to do with it. Aside from the fact that he made a disaster of a Chilul Hashem by signing that letter against Rabbi Mizrahi, aside from the fact that he blamed Rabbi Mizrahi before even Rabbi Mizrahi even knew about this. Before Rabbi even knew, Rabbi Mizrahi even knew that this was all happening, he was already blamed for doing this campaign of going against this whole thing. And, and on top of it, he writes, listen, Rabbi Mizrahi had a debate against a Christian professor several years ago. What's so different about me bringing Matthew Kelly? He's comparing Rabbi Mizrahi destroying Christianity, which has caused many Jews to do tshuva, many non-Jews to convert to Judaism, or at the very least leave Christianity. One of them is in the crowd. I just met him today. He saw the debate for the first time, and he says, Obviously, I know that Christianity is nonsense. He left it, and right, Baal Hashem, and now he's in the process of converting. He's right here. Watch the debate. I didn't plan this. I never knew him before today. Apparently, he's been watching my lectures for a long time. So he's comparing Rabbi Mizrahi, doing a huge Kiddush Hashem that no one's willing to do, really, except maybe a couple of other rabbis, like Rabbi Tobia Singer, Rabbi Skobak. But the way Rabbi Mizrahi did it, he destroyed it. Better than anyone else, in my opinion. He's comparing that, fulfilling the mitzvah of abusing idol worship, insulting it, destroying it, that Kiddush Hashem, that mitzvah, he's comparing it to bringing a great white evil shark to a bunch of little sardines that have no idea the shark is there. What is this like? It's like somebody saying, listen, I'm a tzaddik, 
I'm a tzaddik. I'm going to bring more fish into the tank. And he keeps bringing more fish into the tank. And he brings more fish into the tank. He's like, look, I'm feeding them. And I'm feeding them. And they have divrei Torah. And they have lectures. And they have daf yomi. And they have this. And we have synagogue. And it's a fancy synagogue. And we have a holocaust center next to it. And everything is great. And wow. And then next thing you know, after he fed him, and everybody got really fat and comfortable and, and, and lazy and comfortably numb, what does he do? He brings the great white shark. It was better off, you didn't build the community, just don't bring the great white shark. Where's the Kvod Hashem? Where is it? What God do you believe in that you think it's okay to bring an idol worshiper? Where does it say it? Where? Show me the Allah. Show me one real posek. Name the guy. Name the posek. Name two poskim that said. You said two poskim said it. Well, I found out one of them. And he said it's only with diavad because you already made a mistake that maybe you allow it. But the reality of it is he doesn't know the size of the mistake. Because according to the article that was written as a rebuttal for everything that we're doing, even the article misquoted everything. I know how to write also. I wrote some things in my life. I know the power of speech. I know how you can twist words. I fought the government, I fought major multi-billion dollar companies, I fought individuals, I fought everyone. For the first time in my life, I know for sure I'm right. Because God said so. Where is your Kvod Hashem that you're bringing an idol worshiper to teach a bunch of clueless Jews that are just sleeping at the wheel? Scared to even respond, yeah, I know, I'm just not going to go. I know you're right, your own. I know you're right. You're a great person, Rabbi. But I'm just not going to go. Okay, but why can't you speak out? Yeah, but I, you know, I'm going to cause problems for my kids. They have to move, change yeshivas. People are going to look at me funny. You know, I don't want to cause any problems. I already bought the house. You know, we just, we just, we just expanded the house. We just redid the kitchen. We have a bar mitzvah coming up in two months. Everyone is so comfortably numb. They don't want to destroy their lives and disturb them. But asking Hashem for a bigger house, another house, more kids, a cure for cancer. They ask, like one of the rabbis, Moskowitz, asked for. Not too long ago, a year and a half ago or so, he had cancer. God gave him a cure. You can't say thank you by kicking this guy out. Saying, Matthew, thank you by no thank you. When Goldberg and family got all their kids, Baruch Hashem, they told us a story of unfortunate experience. They had a pregnancy. But when he gave them more kids and you cried on stage and told us, you can't give them a little bit of thank you back. So what if you spend money? So what if your honor is destroyed? So what if you look stupid? Better live a lifelong of stupidity in this world than one minute of being a shy in Hashem's world. One minute. Where's your Kvod Hashem? What God do you believe in? He also claimed that we did fake, he said fake news and we made up stuff. He claimed that we're lying. Everyone can see that it's not fake news. He knows that he's wrong and he's not going to give up. Point has already been made. The point has already been made. Everyone knows the facts. Everyone wants this information. You can email me. I'd be more than happy to send it to you. You can look it up online yourself in case you don't trust my sources. You want to look it up. I provided the websites. Call Matthew Kelly yourself. Watch his videos if you can handle it. In reality, you're not allowed to. You're not allowed to. But for the purpose of destroying this whole thing and hoping it doesn't happen, we had to. We used even non-Jews for help as much as we can so we don't have to be tainted by this Chilu Hashem. Please, cancel the event. Baruch Adonai Amen v'amen.